So we have been working on acids and bases. And so far, we should be able to recognize acids and bases. Um, we should be able to see our molecular formula, identify them as strong or weak acid or bases. Good. We know that we should practice nitrogen because nitrogen is the one that is really tricky. So like in general, nitrogen with three bonds, which means has one or at least one lone pair, is basic. So NH3 and CH33 or any combination of things like that. Like I could write something like H and CH32. So this nitrogen is attached to a hydrogen and it's also attached to two CH3s, which are called methyls. So it still has a lone pair. So in general, when you see the nitrogen like that, we, that, has, that is attached to three things, it's going to be basic. We know that when you have an oxide with at least one hydrogen, then it's going to be acidic. And most, this one is normally not difficult because you guys know that HNO2 and HNO3 are acids because most of you memorize them from Chem 101 or Chem, Chem 141. So that's normally not an issue. Um, and for the most part, that's what we need to recognize because then like if the nitrogen um, has a negative charge, then it's gonna be basic. But that is fine because we know that compounds with negative charges are most likely basic. Um, and when the nitrogen has a positive charge and it has hydrogens, then it's gonna be acidic. And the, the example or the most common example will be um, NH4 plus. But then I can write this guy in the acid form, which then will be like maybe two H's and then an N and a CH3, three plus. So I will say just make sure you practice nitrogen because that's the one that gets really tricky um, to most people. Anyways, um, we did some problems with this. We also talk about the pH scale. Um, last week, so we talked about how the pH, the pH work. And if I remember correctly, and I might be getting confused because I make so many videos that I don't know if I cover things in class or if I just made a video out of, of it. Um, we talk about how KW, which is the equilibrium constant of water, equals one times 10 to the negative 14. We talk about how KW equals the concentration of hydronium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions in any aqueous solution. We talk about how this leads to an equation that says PKW will equal the pH plus the POH, where PKW is the negative log of KW, which is the negative log of one times 10 to the negative 14. And that is it, um, the calculation equals 14. So we can say that PH plus POH equals 14. And I think that's just about what we covered last week, right? We cover all of this, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna assume that the silence means yes. We are all experts on all of this. Great.
Okay, so I wanted to spend most of the time today talking about actually calculating pH. And if I remember correctly, we did not do anything about calculating pH last week, right? Okay, perfect. I know I post some videos, but we'll go over how to calculate the pH of all type of types of compounds um, today. So the first thing we'll do is calculating the pH of a strong acid. So the way I'm going to do this, um, at least now, is I'm gonna go sort of like the long way um, just because I want to make it like a standard procedure on how to calculate the pH of everything. But I don't expect you to actually do it this way if you're taking a quiz or an exam. Like just do whatever is easier, whatever is faster. Does that make sense? Okay, so calculating the pH. Um, let's pick any strong acid. So let's work with HCl. Let's say we have a solution that is 0 0.0750 molar, and we want to find the pH. For all problems, the first thing we are going to do is to write the balance chemical equation. So for this one will be HCl, in this case with water, and you do not have to add water when you're working with an acid. You can write the reaction without water. Uh, but if you put water, you'll form H3O plus and Cl minus. So since HCl is a strong acid, I just put an arrow going one way. If you were to uh, write the reaction without water, you basically will have HCl going to H plus and Cl minus. And either equation will be fine to use. You don't, you can pick whichever. Um, this will be aqueous, this will be liquid, this will be aqueous, and this will be aqueous. Okay, so step number two is we're gonna write an ice table. And this is the part that you don't really have to do for Strong, strong acids. Um, I'm just gonna do it just to keep it consistent, but you don't really have to. Um, you're just gonna add a lot of time that you don't really need to um, add to this problem. But anyways, so for, to make an ice table, um, there's three steps on the ice table, the I, the C, and the E. The I is for initial, and I'm gonna say concentration. If you Google this, or you're trying to like find examples on YouTube, most people or many people don't use concentration in your initial, they only use moles. I would recommend you to use concentration because at some point you have to go back to concentration and a lot of people use moles and then they forget to change back to concentration and then they lose a lot of points because they just do, you want to get in the wrong answer. So I normally just change everything to concentration at the beginning. In this case, the concentration is given. Sometimes it's not gonna be, so you have to do some sort of calculation to get it. So I would just get it to concentration right away. That would just save your points and you don't have to remember to change it back. So we got initial concentration for I. C is a change in this case of concentration. And then E will be your equilibrium concentration. Good. So that will be our ice level. So re reading the problem, we know that we have 0 0.0750 molar of hydrochloric acid. If you have anything that is um, liquid or is solid, and I will even extend that to anything that is like not acidic or basic, I will just not keep track of them. So I will say like water in this case, since it's liquid, I'm just gonna trace a line because it won't really affect my equilibrium. Then I have H3O, 
So in this case, we didn't add any H3O, so initially we put zero. And Cl minus, we put zero. You could also trace a line for Cl minus because Cl minus is neutral, it doesn't change the pH. So since we are trying to find the pH, the concentration of Cl minus won't really make a difference. So you can just trace a line and just ignore it if you want to. I'm gonna keep track of it, but you don't have to. These are some of the things that I'm doing right now just to be consistent, but for the most part, you can just ignore them. Okay, so then my change, uh, I need to think about what chemical I have. And in this case, I have hydrochloric acid, and I know it's a strong acid, so it will react completely. So my change will be all HCl will break apart. So I'm gonna lose 0 0.0750 molar of HCl. Everything is going to react, which means that since HCl and H3O are one-to-one -one ratio, I will form 0 0.075 molar of H3O plus. And I will also form 0 0.075 molar of Cl minus. So at equilibrium, um, I will have zero HCl. And basically you calculate equilibrium by doing I plus C then this will be zero plus that, so 0 0.075 molar and 0 0.075 molar. You guys all with me? So then I actually wanted to calculate the pH and I know that the pH will equal the negative log of the concentration of H plus or H3O because they're the same at equilibrium. So when I look at my ice table, I look at that last step. I'm looking at it, I know that the concentration of H3O at equilibrium is 0 0.075. So I can say that my pH will equal the negative log of 0 0.075 molar. And that is a number we can calculate. Let me find my calculator. So that would be 1.12, good? So in general, if I'm working with a strong acid, I don't really do an ice table because it's sort of like a waste of time. Like you can, you're basically taking the 0 0.075 and doing three steps to move it to the pro side. Like for every strong acid, they will always break down like completely. So I can just as I can just take the pH as a negative log of the concentration of the acid. Does that make sense? You don't have to do the whole ice table to move all the acid down to the estrio, like because you'll know that those two numbers are the same. Where do you get the molar from? Will that be given, or do you need to calculate that? So in this case, it was given. Like I just told you the number, and for the most part, I'll give you the number. Um, some of the examples where you somewhat have have to do some calculation is, I don't know, let's say, I can say like you got 0 0.0075 moles in 100 milliliters, like that would be an example. So then you have to actually change it to concentration. So that would be the 0 0.0075 divided by 0 0.1 liters. And that will give you the molar concentration. This will be one example. Um, the other one will be some sort of dilution. Like I can say something like, you have 25 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar HCl and you mix it with 75 milliliters of water. So then you can do something like M1 V1 equals M2 V2, where your M1 will be your 0.1, V1 will be 25 equals M2, which is what you don't know, and V2 will be 25 plus 75. And then that will give you M2, which is your concentration, and then you just put that there. 
And I will say for a strong acid, I wouldn't even put it there. I will just take the negative log of that. Good? Something about strong acids, and I should mention this now, um, so you guys know this. Um, so if we look at the strong acids, um, we got HCl, HBr, HI, HClO3, HClO4, HNO3, and H2SO4. So let's say the concentrations are 0 0.1 molar. And this is the concentration of the acid. Um, let's make here the concentration of H plus. So this will be acid and that will be H plus. So HCl has one H. So the H plus will be also 0.1 molar. So that's what I normally don't do the ice table because I know that. And that is true basically for the first six of them, right? Um, they only have one H. So I don't really need to do one ice table because I know everything is gonna break apart, good? The one that gets confusing is H2SO4. So what is the concentration of H2SO4? Um, this one is a bit trickier. And I would say that the concentration is actually close to 0.1 molar. It's not 0.2 molar. Like when you have acids, acids don't lose all the H's at once. And we'll talk about that later. But if the acid has more than one H, it will lose one H and then maybe lose a second H. Good? So don't multiply by how many H's the compound has. The way acids that have multiple H's work, um, multiple H's, we call it polyprotic. So protein for the proton and poly for multiple. So multiple H's is this compound will actually lose an H and form H is of four minus. And then this is a weak acid and it will form a second H and then S of four, two minus. But you see the first one is a strong acid dissociation. So everything breaks apart. The second one, you need to have an equilibrium constant and treat it as a weak acid. So don't worry too much about this now. What I want you to know is the H2SO4, 0.1 molar is not 0.2. Good? Okay. At some point when we talk about weak, uh, weak acids and polyprotic acids, then we'll talk about how to calculate the pH of that. But that is a fun guy that most likely you guys don't wanna see on the quiz. Good? Okay, so let's work with weak acids. So weak acid, let's say we wanna find the pH of a 0 0.05 molar H CH3 COOH so acetic acid solution good so we just want to find this uh, the pH of this um so as we mentioned before the first step is to write the balance chemical equation so I write my equation. I'm gonna write it with water, but you can write it without water. Either way is fine. So CH3, COOH, plus H2O, at equilibrium, because now we are working with a weak acid, um, forming H3O plus, and CH3, COO minus. Okay, so then our physical states, you don't have to write them if you don't want to. Like I won't, you won't lose any points for not writing them. Um, 
Well, I just like having them there. So number two will be our ice table. And for these ones, I will actually say that you sort of need an ice table. Um, with lots of practice, you might not need it, but for the most part, it's good to use them to keep track of things. So I'll do my ice initial change equilibrium. And I'm gonna write the initial values I have. So I know I have 0 0.075 molar for acetic acid. I'm gonna trace a line here because water is not gonna do anything and it's a liquid. Then we didn't add any H3O and we did not add any acetic any sorry, acetate. So we have zero of those. Strong acids dissociate completely. So I can just say that C is the same as I, but weak acids do not. It's only a portion of the initial that will actually break apart. And I don't know what that number is. So I'm just gonna call that number X. I'm gonna put a minus X, meaning that 0 0.075 is going to decrease by X. Since acetic acid and H3O are one-to-one -one ratio, I can say that then H3O will increase by X and also that acetate will increase by X. If they were not one-to-one -one ratio, if they actually were one-to-two ratio, then you will keep track or you will drag down those coefficients. So if this was a two, then that will also be a two, okay? But in this case, they're all one. So this is how it's gonna look like. So then at equilibrium, I add my I and my C. So I plus C will be 0 0.075 minus X. This will be zero plus X. So X and zero plus X, X. When I was working with um, a strong acid, then we said, oh, I want to find the pH. And I know the pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. Then I look at my equilibrium step. And in equilibrium, I have X. Initially, or in the other problem, I have a number. But in this case, to find the pH, I will basically have to take the negative log of X. And I can't do that because that's not really a number. So then I need to find a way to find the X value for this reaction. So what you need to do is, in this case, you need to find K. Since we are working with an acid, yeah, it's gonna be called Ka. Is the equilibrium constant of the acid. Where do you find them? On a table. They're basically given, they're just somewhere. So you just need to look in the book or look somewhere, um, some of the resources I gave you, and they're gonna be there. Most of the problems, we just have them there. Like it will say, find the pH of a 0 0.075 molar solution of acetic acid. And then you might have Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth next to the problem. But if, if they're not there, there's like the table that you have on cover that has all the K, K values that you need to know. So now we have this. So now we have the K value and we know that K is pros over reactants. So I know it's going to be H3O plus times CH3 COO minus divided by CH3 COOH. And this is when, if you learn um, how to do ice tables in chemistry 141, then it become, it's gonna become a little bit easier to learn how to find pHs of weak acids, because we are basically gonna be using um, ice tables. Um, so, we did our ice table, we found the concentrations at equilibrium, and then we are gonna use the K value to try to find the value of X. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put all the information I know into this K equation. So I know the K value, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I also know that the concentration of H3O at equilibrium is X, and the concentration of acetate at equilibrium is also X. Then I know the concentration of CH3COOH at equilibrium is 0 0.075 minus X. 
So luckily, I only have x, I like one variable in all this equation. So I just need to solve for it. So I get 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0 0.075 minus x equals x squared. Good. And when you get here, there are two different ways you can solve this problem. Uh, I'm gonna do it one way, but I wanna tell you the second way you can do this. Um, in red is one way you could do it. So I wanna call this A. Um, you can expand this. So you basically will have zero equals X squared and then will be plus 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth x minus whatever this number is, which I don't know right now, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times, let me not use x, so it make it less confusing, times 0 0.075. So you will get that equation. And this is a quadratic equation. So you could use the quadratic formula. So like negative B plus minus the square root of B squared minus four AC divided by two A. Yay. You're so happy. We love quadratic formula, right? <laughs> so that's one way to do it. I don't like doing quadratic formula. Like I can do it. It's just, it's just annoying. I will say, if you're really good with your calculator and you have a graphing calculator, you're taking these quizzes at home, so you can just do it in your uh, calculator. If you don't like quadratic formula, and I can do it on my calculator, but I still don't like doing quadratic formula, I think it's just mental, like I just don't like it. Um, I'm gonna pick path B. Path B, path B starts with a 5% rule. So you have to do the 5% rule. 5% rule, basically you take the K value and you divide it by initial and you multiply it by 100. So in this case, it will be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.075 times 100. If you do that calculation, let's do that calculation, 1.8 e to the negative fifth divided by 0 0.075 times 100 to get 0 0.024. This number is less than five. So smiley face because that's good. Um, what that allows you to do is, let me find my mouse. Okay. What that allows you to do is, it tells you that x value if the number is less than five it tells you that the x values is very small and why do we care about that because if it's less than five percent it says that 0 0.075 minus x is about 0 0.075, meaning the initial minus x is gonna be about the initial. It's just that amount that the, that the initial concentration is losing is so tiny that it's barely making a difference. And if that is true, that means that I can write my 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0 0.075 minus x equals x squared, I can just remove that x because it's just about 0 0.075. And if that is true, that makes my calculation a lot easier because now I only have 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0 0.075 equals x squared which is a lot easier calculation because now I can just say that X equals the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth 
and 0 0.075. And that is a calculation that I don't mind doing because that's actually fairly easy. So one, 1 1.8 to the negative fifth times 0 0.075, all of that elevated to the half. So I can take the square root. So then I know that X will be 0 0.00116 more. So for all of you who do not really like doing a quadratic formula, I think this is the path to go. I'm me included because I don't like doing quadratic formula. Um, so we got this number and we were trying to find the pH. I want to go back to my red. So the pH was the negative log in this case of the x. So now I know what the x is so I can say the negative log of 0 0.00116 molar. So then my pH will be whatever that number is. Let's see what it is. Negative log of all of that. So 2.93. Good. It's like a marathon. A little bit. A um, couple things. I, I'm a little bit lazy sometimes, mostly because I do this all the time. So I get tired of doing these ice tables. A um, couple things. Um, it's about, like, about the 5% rule. In general, if K is smaller than one times 10 to the negative fifth, it will pass for sure. So normally, even actually, if I see something elevated to the negative fifth, I just assume it passes the 5% rule. I don't even do the calculation. Does that make sense? But nah, it's a really small K, which means that it doesn't break a lot. When you start getting K values that are more like intermediate, like close to one, then that's when you start getting like scared. Like, I will say if I see something times 10 to the negative three, maybe to the negative four, then I'm like, mm, maybe I should do the, the or anything smaller than that. I'm like, whatever. Like this is just not gonna pass it. Like, this is actually going to pass it. So I can just go directly to this type of calculation. Good. Um, something else, and this might be like giving you too much information, but you can rewatch this later and maybe it will make sense. Um, so if I have a weak acid and it goes to equilibrium, if the 5% works, X equals the square root of Ka times initial. And if you look back to what we have here, this is the Ka value and that was the initial concentration. And that's what X was. So they're just like random shortcuts. Um, if you want to do quadratic, um, it's always X squared plus K times X plus K times initial equals zero. So and this will be, in this case, like KAs. So you could like sort of skip some of the steps because they're always gonna yield the same thing. Most people don't get this far, but it's just something. So how are we doing with assets? Somewhere okay? Maybe. I think I just need to do it a couple times. Yeah, and that actually makes sense. Um, let's just do this. Where's my board?
Okay, so you guys see those three problems? Okay, so um, I'm gonna get some water. So I'm gonna give you guys to work those three problems. That's, sounds good? So hopefully it's a good problem. You guys are all in the same chat. So if you got questions or something, feel free to talk to each other. I'm gonna pause the recording, so. You guys had the problems down? Perfect. So I just want to pause the record. Okay, so did we find PHS? I sort of did them, um, and that is what I got. So for the first one, for the uh, nitric acid solution, I got a pH equals to 2.76. If you did not get that, or you have any questions about how to do that one, just let me know. So that, okay. I'm gonna take the lack of noise as like it was good. <laughs> um, then the second one, um, for the second one, you needed to know it was a weak acid. So it's not one of the seven strong acids. So you, you have to go to the ice table. Um, if you did that, you should got either 2.27 or 2.24. 2.27 would be like the correct answer. That is, if you go to quadratic formula, if you take the shortcut and you use the 5% rule, you'll see like it was really close to five. So it wasn't quite um, small enough, but it would just move down to 2.24. So I wanted to do a problem like this. So you know that the higher the value you get when you're doing the 5% rule, the closer it is to five, then your pH would like change a little. So instead of being 2.27, it's 2.24. So if you're doing the shortcut, sometimes you have to take the closest answer to what you calculated. Does that make sense? Because you're making an assumption, so your numbers might be a little bit off, but it's not really like a big thing. Like it was just that number. Um, it's not too far, just 0.03 uh, numbers away. Uh, then for C, I got 1.21 as the pH value for that solution. So I have to first use M1, B1 equals M2, B2. And um, in this case, it was M1 was 0 0.75 times 33 equals M2, which will be what we don't know. And V2 was 33 plus 367. I think I did that right. Now I don't remember if I used 0.75 or not. So I wanna make sure I actually, did. yeah, I did. So questions about how to find the pH of these acids? No, good. Okay, so we reached our 8.50, so it's our 10 minute break. So I give you a 10 minute break to go around, stretch, get some coffee or tea. And see you guys, see you guys back at nine. You're still muted. Perfect. Okay, so let's go back and keep working on finding pHs. 
I will say Daryl share, share some information on the chat that is helpful. So if you want to um, program your DI-84, and I'm sure like any other calculator can be programmed to do the quadratic formula. So you just Google it. Um, so let's find, um, P, find the pH of strong bases. So strong bases are really similar to strong acids. They're gonna be fairly simple. Um, There's just one thing you guys have to remember about strong bases. So um, let's find the pH of a 0 0.0100 molar NaOH solu solution. And then we are actually going to do two problems. You can also find the pH of a 0 0.0100 molar calcium hydroxide solution. I'm going to do A here and B there. Um, so starting with A, or we start with sodium hydroxide, the first thing we do is the balanced chemical equation. So we always do the same thing. And I always try to be really like, systematic so it helps you work through these problems. So let's write the balanced chemical equation. When you're working with a strong base, you need to remember that you do not add water because the water doesn't really react. So then our sodium hydroxide will break down into sodium and two hydroxide ions. Second thing we will do is an ice table. So we're treating them, treating them the same way as we treated the acids. So I, C, E. Initial for sodium hydroxide is 0 0.01 molar. We didn't add any sodium and we didn't add any hydroxide. Then our exchange, since it's a strong base, everything is going to break apart, which means that you're gonna form 0 0.01 of sodium and 0 0.01 of hydroxide. So at the end, you got no sodium hydroxide and you have 0 0.01 molar of sodium ions and 0 0.01 molar of hydroxide ions. So we want to find the pH, and we know that the pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. In this reaction, if we look at the equilibrium, there is no um, sodium, sorry, H plus or hydronium ions in this reaction. So there's two things you could do. A, which is not what I'm going to do, but you could do this, is use the equation one times 10 to the negative 14 equals H plus times OH minus. You do have H, A, OH, so I can say that my H plus is going to equal one times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 0 0.01, which is my concentration of OH minus. And using that, then you'll know that the H plus equals one times 10 to the negative 12. And you can use that to find the pH. Does that make sense? B, which is what I normally do, is I know that pH plus POH equals 14. So I can use my OH to find my POH first. So I'll do POH equals negative log of OH minus, which is negative log of one, oh sorry, 0 0.01. So my POH equals two. So then my pH will equal 14 minus two, which is 12. If you were doing the 
A path, a path you, can, you can then find the pH, which will be negative log of one times 10 to the negative 12, and that will equal 12. So either way, you actually get the same answer. Um, I just like finding the POH first, mostly because I don't like doing that division because it just takes more typing time. Does that make sense? But overall, either way is fine. You can get your OH and change it to H plus and find the pH, or you can use your OH to find your POH and then find the pH. So basically when you're working with bases, you're doing the same thing as you're doing with acids, but you need to do one extra step because bases won't give you H plus directly. So you need to find a way to relate the OH to the H plus. You can either do it through this conversion or you can do it through not that, but that conversion. Good. So I wanted to do two problems um, for strong bases because strong bases can be a little tricky. Um, so let's say you have calcium hydroxide. The first thing you're going to do is to write the equation and that will break down into calcium two plus and two hydroxides. So in general, when you're working with acids, you are always one-to-one -one ratio. When you're working with strong bases, they're not always one-to-one -one ratio. So that's the part that I wanted to highlight here. So the second thing is you're gonna do your ice table. And I start with 0 0.01, 0, and 0. Then all of it is going to react. So that all goes away. And I form plus 0 0.01 molar of calcium, and I form plus two times 0 0.01 molar of hydroxide. And that two comes from the one to two ratio between the two chemicals. So it comes from the balanced chemical equation. So you always need to drive down the coefficients. For the most part, only strong bases can give you a one to two ratio. Um, you will not see one to two ratio or anything like that for acids. Acids are always one to one ratio. So at equilibrium, I have 0 0.01, sorry, I actually have zero. I have 0 0.01 molar and 0 0.02 molar. So um, to find the pH, first I'll find my pOH. So that will be negative log of 0 0.02. So negative log at 0 0.02, get 1.7, the OH equals 1.7, zero. And then my pH will be 40 minus 1.7, zero. So that is 12.3. That makes sense? Good. Questions about finding the pH of strong bases? No? Good. Okay. So we can move on to weak bases. Good. So we are going to do. I'm trying to decide what I want to do first. Okay, so um, this is what I want to do first. I want to do something before finding the, P, the pH. So let's say we want to find the pH of a 0 0.010 molar KCH3COO. So this will be potassium acetate. Good. So this problem is gonna have a bunch of different things. 
um, is a little bit difficult, but I want to do this one because it covers everything you need to know. So if at some point during a break and you have questions, just let me know. Um, so I can stop, stop, slow down and allow you to like catch up and make sure that you know what, what's happening. So make sure that you don't fall behind. Okay, so to find the pH, the first thing we are going to do is the balanced chemical equation. So for the balanced chemical equation, so you have KCH3COO, right? So this is an ionic compound. So the first thing you have to do is you have to separate that compound into its components, which will be K plus and CH3COO minus. Good? Because all ionic compounds have two different components, so you don't have to, I didn't, to need to like study them individually. Um, you look at K plus, K plus is neutral, so we can somewhat ignore K plus. And then CH3COO minus is a weak base. So we are gonna use CH3 COO minus to write our equation. Then you need to remember that weak bases, you have to add water. If you don't add water, you don't have a place to form the OH minus. So it's important that you have the water in the reaction. And that would be liquid. Then you got the arrows going back and forth, showing that that reaction will, will reach equilibrium. It doesn't go only one way. And then you form OH minus, by definition, bases in water form OH. And they form OH by taking an H away from water. So this compound will gain an H. So that will be our balanced chemical equation. Does that make sense? Good. Okay, so we got our balanced chemical equation. The number two, we're gonna do our I stable. Okay, I, C, E. Okay, so we have our ice table. Um, initially for acetate, we got 0 0.010 molar. Water is liquid, so we ignore it. And we did not add any base or any hydroxide. And we did not add any acetic acid. So zeros and zeros. This base is weak, which means we don't really know how much is going to react, so we're going to do minus x. Then, if x amount reacts, then x amount of OH is going to be formed, and x amount of acetic acid is going to be formed. To get our equilibrium, we add the two steps, so 0 0.01, 0 minus x, x, and x. Good? So then we know we want to find the pH, and in this case, that will equal the negative log of H plus, but we don't have that. So in what we are going to do is we're gonna find the pOH first. Because we know that we can use the pH plus pOH equals 14 equation to then change my pOH to pH. So we got all of that. So now we know that since we are at equilibrium, we are gonna have to use the K of the reaction. So in this case, they're gonna use the K. They're working with a base, so we're gonna use the KB. So the equilibrium of the base. 
good and that will equal OH minus times CH3 COOH divided by CH3 COO minus good you guys all with me so I know that OH minus is X I know that CH3 COOH is X and I know that CH3 CO minus is 0 0.01 minus X so the only thing I'm missing is to find the K value good so here's like it is a little tricky so I wanted to go over this so let's say that you want to find the k value and when you go to let me stop sharing and start sharing that and you go to the table to a table and try to find the k values i go here oh it's a base so i'm gonna look here and when i look down to these compounds none of these compounds are the one i want so we got urea, we have aniline, we have pyridine, we have ammonia, we have methyl aline, uh, aline, and we have ethyl aline. We don't have our acetate, so we don't have the KB value. Um, if you look at the acids, you do have the acetic acid KA value. Acetic acid, CH3COOH is the conjugate acid of acetate. It will be CH3COO minus. The difference between the two of them is only one H, so they are a conjugate pair. So there is this equation that you could use that is the KA. I can't see your acid. Acid. you can oh yeah that makes sense <laughs> uh, okay so we um have acetic acid and that is a conjugate acid of acetate the difference between the two of them is an h there is this equation that says that the Ka of the acid times the Kb of the conjugate equals Kw. Kw is like everywhere. <laughs> so basically, Ka times Kb equals one times 10 to the negative 14. So if I know the Ka of acetic acid, I can use that to find the Kb of acetate. Technically, you can right now, you can just Google it and you'll find it. But if for some reason you cannot find the KB of something, you can find the KA of the acid and change it to KB. And there will be problems like on the, on the quiz and what's not on the homework where I give you the KA and I ask you to find it to, to calculate the KB or vice versa. So in this case, um, the KA is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That would be times KB equals one times 10 to the negative 14. So my KB then equals 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. So you can use this equation to convert between KAs and KBs. So if that is true, then I have 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10 equals all of that. As we talked about before, this K value is tiny, it's super small. So is it gonna pass the 5% rule? Yes. So you can program your TI-84, you can use Wolf point Alpha, but I am going to remove that X. Good? Because I know that it will pass. the 5% rule is tiny. So if that is true, then I know 
that 5.56, let me go back to red, times 10 to the negative 10 equals x squared divided by 0.01. So then I can say that x equals the square root of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10 times 0 0.01. So then x equals some number that we will calculate soon. So x will be 5, 5.56 e to the negative 10 times 0 0.01 square root of that. X is 2.36 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the negative 6 molar. Good? Okay, so we found X. We need to remember that X equals the concentration of OH minus because we are working with bases. This is something that people always get confused. They forget and they use this to find the pH. But we are in the bases, so this is OH. So we will find the pOH, which will be the negative log of 2.36 times 10 to the negative six molar. So then we'll have to find the POH, which will be the negative log of all of that. So it's 5.63 is the POH. So then the pH will be 14 minus 5.63. So the pH will be 8.37. Isn't it this fun? <laughs> Good. This starts so easy when you're just doing a strong acid, you're like, oh yeah, minus log. Then the weak acids makes it a little bit harder. And then weak bases just makes it so much worse. Good? Okay, so. So like my summary. We're going to be finding pH, and you can have strong acid. And to find the pH of the strong acid, basically the pH equals the negative log of I. Does that make sense? Where I is the initial concentration of my acid. So like doing ice tables and everything else, at the end, you're basically gonna end it up there. Good? If you have a weak acid, you're gonna end it up having to find X. And X equals the square root of Ka times initial. I'm gonna put 5% rule here. Or you gonna end up having x squared plus kx minus k times initial equals zero. And that will be like quadratic formula. So then the pH will be the negative log of x. That sort of makes sense? I mean, I'm like summarizing a lot. <laughs> it's like 25 minutes into just like two steps. 
And I'm, I'm not complaining. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, so we spend a lot of time doing acid on basis because we do this. And then we also go um, and Ecus Equilibria, the next chapter is just this, like more of this. So it's good to get some shortcuts, but I will say right now, it's better for you to just find a way that makes sense to you. Like you can process all this information. Even if it takes you a long time, it doesn't matter. I'll just take my time and make sure I, I understand what I'm doing. Because if you just like start shortcutting everything and skipping steps, you might get confused in the next chapter. Then we got, I'm gonna jump all the way out <laughs> and do strong base. We have a strong base. Basically, you get the POH equals, I'm gonna do N times I. And um, why do I do N? Because sometimes you can have like, um, like a one to two ratio or something like that. Does that make sense? For the most part, the N is gonna be one, but let's say you got, so NaOH, will form one OH, but calcium hydroxide will form two OH. So then that is your, what I call like the N value. Good? Hopefully. Then we got weight bases. And weight bases or weight base is the same as like on acid, the only thing is like X is gonna be the square root of KB times initial if the 5% works or X squared plus KB X minus KB times I if I do in quality formula. And then you get the POH equals the negative log of X and then the pH will equal 14 minus pOH. And that's all we learned today. Wasn't that bad? See, just one screen. <laughs> you guys still alive? Somewhat? Okay, so. Let's go back to where's my class. Let's find the class first. I'm glad that you guys are already silent because that means that everything makes sense and it's like fine. That's good. I'm I'm I am not translating silence to like you guys are confused. I'm translating tra translating it to like this is like easy, so much fun. Okay, so, so far, these are all the things I want you to know. Um, we need to be able to define all the acids and bases. And I think for the most part, you guys know that, we did that last week. Then classify compounds and salt as strong acid, weak acid, strong bases, weak bases or neutral. This is really important. If you guys think what we did today is bad, you know what's worse than that? Take a compound, identify it wrong, and then do all of that. <laughs> because then you do all of that, and all of that is wrong. So this part is really important. And the sad part is, if you got the KA, that doesn't mean anything. Because maybe you had to use the KA to find the KB. Does that make sense? So it's really important to be able to recognize this thing. So keep practicing that. Um, I'll, the more problems you do, the more used you're gonna, the more used you're gonna be to see the compounds and know what they are. So you just keep practicing them. Even when like, 
if you're going through the homework problems and you don't want to do them all, you can at least like look at the chemical and look at the answer, like what pH it is. And then you know, oh, this chemical has a low pH. So this chemical is an acid or this chemical has a high pH. This chemical is a base. So you can just do something like that. You just practice um, what compounds are. Conjugate pairs, that's mostly something in Chem 141. So hopefully you guys remember. Um, doing calculations between pH and pOH, we did some of them today, going from pOH to pH. Um, going from H plus to OH, we did some calculations for that also, because we use this equation mostly to move bases to the pH scale. Um, we did um, strong bases, weak acids, weak bases. Um, we need to do polyprotic acids and we'll do that. We do, do one today. Um, convert between pH, pOH, H plus, OH, Ka, Kb. We did those things. We didn't do pK and pKb. Um, we won't really do it on this quest. We will do it in the next quest. Basically, pKa plus pKb equals 14. That's what the question is. Uh, it's not really important in this chapter, it's more important in the next chapter, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but that is the equation, just in case you see a problem like that. Um, we haven't done this, um, we'll do this next class. There's a video on this already, so you can look to the video. Um, and this one we haven't either, and for the most part, we won't really spend too much, too much uh, time on this, because these two are basically solved the same way. Anyways, the last thing I want to do today is actually going over polyprotic acids. Those are like the worst, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I'm pretty sure you guys don't want anything worse than weak bases. They're like terrible in a weird way. It really depends on the question. So we'll do one. You guys can complain about it. <laughs> I never put a lot of problems about Polyprotic acids, you might get one if that. They're just really time consuming. So I like scaring you guys. So I'm just gonna give you a terrible problem just for fun. Like what else are we gonna do at 9.30 in the morning besides that really ugly chemistry problem? I think that just, that just sounds fun. So let's say we want to find the pH of a 0 0.75 molar H3PO4 solution. Good. So we are basically finding the pH of a weak acid. So not too bad, right? I'm gonna do this a little bit out of order. Um, so we know we are working with a, with a weak acid. So we need to find the K value, right? Because we at some point we're gonna have to use it. So let's say I, uh, let me find the document. Um, where is it? Oh, it's here. Can you guys see it, the document? No? Uh, terrible. Let me go back to my sharing screen. So we go here and we start looking at, okay, so we are working with phosphoric acid. Let's find the K value. And we find phosphoric acid 
and it has three values. Yeah, if you think that 1K is bad, imagine just three, it's gonna be great. So what does that actually mean? So having three KA values means that when you have H3PO4 and you mix it in water, it breaks down and it forms H plus and it also forms H2PO4 minus. And that has a K value. But H2PO4 minus could still break down and form H plus and HPO4 two minus, and that has a K value. And HPO4 two minus can still break down and form H plus and PO4 three minus, and that has a K value. Yay! That's why we have KA1, which in this case is 7.5 times 10 to the negative three. We got KA2, which is 6.2 times 10 to the negative eight, and KA3, which is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 13. Does that make sense? So basically, this problem is three problems. You have to do basically a nice table three times. So we'll start with our first ice table. So if you wanna find the pH, we need to find the concentration of H plus here, here, and there. So for the first ice table, we start with 0.75. We have zero and zero. Then X amount is going to break down, which means that X amount is gonna form and X amount is gonna form. So then you end up having 0.75 minus X, you have X and you have X. Good? Makes sense? Same thing we have been doing for weak acids. This is the first K value, so we are working with KA1. So I know that I have 7.5 times 10 to the negative three. In this case, will equal X squared divided by 0 0.75 minus X. And you can do the 5% rule, but this K is actually pretty large. So I don't think you will pass the 5% rule. So 7.5 to the negative three divided by 0.75 times 100. Let's pray. Oh, it's one. This is beautiful. <laughs> So it passes the 5% rule, so that makes my life a lot easier. So then if it passes the 5% rule, I can cross that out, and I'm gonna have that X equals the square root of 7.5 times 10 to the negative three times 0 0.75. Good, so then X equals Zero, seven point five to the negative three times point seven five square root of that. So zero point zero seven five more. Good. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's good because we figure out what this number is, but this compound will also produce more H plus. So then we have the second reaction which H2PO4 will form H plus and HPO4 two minus. So how much of this H2PO4 we have, we have X and X is 0 0.075. How much H plus do we have? We also have X amount because we formed some already. So that's 0 0.075. And how much of these do we have? We haven't formed any, so that is zero. 
So then we'll keep going with our i stable. This is minus x, this is plus x, and plus x. She gets 0 0.075 minus x, 0 0.075 plus x, and x. Does that make sense? Somewhat? So then we can say that kh2, well that will be our second ka, is going to equal 0 0.075 plus x times x and 0 0.075 minus x. Then we can do our 5% rule, which will be 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 divided by 0 0.075 but it's to the negative eight, so we know it will pass. So that means I can drop all the x's next to numbers. So this x can go away, and this x can also go away. So every time the 5% rule works, that means that the x number won't make a change if you add it or subtract it from a number. So I can remove those two x's, which makes my calculation a lot easier because now I can say that Ka, actually let me put the number, Kh2, which is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 equals 0.075 x divided by 0.075. The two, these two will cancel. So then x equals 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. Good. See, you're having so much fun. Don't you want to have like lots of problems like this in the homework? <laughs> yeah, almost done. We only have one more to go. <laughs> then we got the last one. So now we know that we have H P of four two minus going to H plus and P of four two three minus. How much of this one we have? HP of 4 to minus, we got these numbers. We got 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. How much H plus do we have? We have 0 0.75 plus 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. And for this one, we have 0. Our change will be minus x, this one will be plus x, and this one will be plus x. So then this is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. This is basically 0 0.75, because 0 0.75 plus that is just about that, about 0.75, and then this one is x. So then we do our equilibrium. So 4.2 times 10 to the negative 13 equals 0 0.75 plus x times x divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 minus x. We can do our 5% rule, but then 13 is going to pass, which means we can drop this x and we can drop that x. So now you have 4.2 times 10 to the negative 13 equals 0 0.75 x divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So not a terrible math calculation. You have to take 4.2 to the negative 13 times 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. We have to divide that by 0 0.5. We actually, I'm missing a 0. There should be a 0 there. 0 0.075. Because my h value is this number.
So we got 3.5 times 10 to the negative 19. Yay. Okay. Do you guys hate me already or not yet? Not yet? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so summary. <laughs> H3PO4 broke down three times, right? First time, the H plus concentration form was 0 0.075. The second time, the H plus concentration form was 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. And the third time, it was 3.5 times 10 to the negative 19 molar. Right? Because those are the X values we got. So at the end, the concentration of H plus total should be adding all those things together, right? And if you add all those numbers together, you get 0 0.075635. Two, Smaller. Right? So you can technically ignore all of this, right? It's like useless, right? So the pH is basically going to be the negative log of 0 0.075. which is something. One point one two. So before we leave, now we're almost done, <laughs> or we're actually done. One, one thing we learned from strong acids, or sorry, for weak acids that are polyprotic. Polyprotic means many, like, many protons of so polyprotic is like the only breakdown we care about is the first one. If you would have done the first part and would have ignored the rest of the work, the red and the green, you would have got 1.12. Does that make sense? Why? because the first breakdown of the acid is the strongest one. And the next, the other breakdowns of the acid are really weak. So polyprotic acids just react as monoprotic acids. They form one, like the first breakdown is the one that matters to find the pH, good? So why was I super mean and I make you go through all of this when it's useless? Because there is a chance that people might ask you, what is the concentration of this guy? If you want to find the pH, you can just find the pH from the first one. But if you want to find the concentration of HPO4 2 minus, that is this number for the 6.2 to a negative 8. If you want to find the concentration of PO4 3 minus, that is 3.5 to a negative 19. So if you wanna find the pH, you never have to go through all the breakdowns. The only time you have to use more than one K and many breakdowns is if you're finding the concentration of the conjugates. Good? So pray, cross your fingers that you would never see that question. Then you never have to worry about this. Good? Okay, so. Any questions, 